back to what Tim said, it's a scam. Uh -huh. It's not really about the students, right? They give them a superficial product to make them feel like they're learning, right? We go and take these useless classes to make us feel like we're, pro we, we're being educated. I found this clip on TimCast IRL talking about the student loan crisis we're about to go through. Now, it may not sound like much and it may not be a 2008 situation, but it might be. Because one thing that might be left out of this conversation is slabs. Those are kind of like mortgage-backed securities, but they're securities that are backed by student loans. Now, you can't be freed of your student loan, but you could stop paying it. I haven't looked too far into this, but it is something interesting. I'd like to hear your comments below. So check out this clip and I'll see you at the end. The story we were looking at is from CNN. Student loan interest resumes Friday and payments restart in October. Here's what borrowers should know. For the first time in more than three years, federal student loan borrows borrowers will be required to pay their monthly student loan bills starting in October. The pandemic-related pause, which went into effect March 2020, provided relief to nearly 44 million borrowers by freezing their accounts. Interest will start accruing again on September 1st, after rates were effectively set to zero. Uh, since March 2020, we know that now interest rates, which are fixed and vary by loan, will return to the same rate they were before the freeze. But borrowers still won't need to take any action until their first monthly payment is due, which means if you don't take action, you will be accruing interest on your debt and then have to pay more money. And, and for as, most, as an aside, the difference between a forbearance and a deferment is that a forbearance means you don't have to pay, but you're still accruing interest, whereas a deferment, you don't pay, but you don't accrue interest. And those are ideal, you know, if you're going to put them off. For most borrowers, the first payment will be due sometime in October, but not everyone has the exact same date. Uh, the exact same date. Borrowers can expect to receive their bill, listing their payment around the due date at least 21 days beforehand. So uh, they, will my payments be the same? They generally will be. How do I find out? Blah, blah, blah. My payments were automatic before. Blah, blah, blah. I, these questions aren't really uh, as relevant. What happens if I don't pay my student loan bill? Because interest will start accruing on September 1st, not making a payment will result in a borrower owing more on their student loans over time. But for the next year through September 30, 2024, the government is providing what it's calling an on-ramp period during which borrowers are shielded from other normal consequences of missing a payment. A loan servicer for, uh, won't, for example, report the loan as being in default to the national credit rating agencies. Borrowers don't need to apply for this benefit. This is one of the funnier elements of this. It means that as the economy starts crumbling and debt spirals out of control, you won't be able to know about it because they're not going to report the delinquencies. Mm. That means when that on-ramp period ends, you're going to see delinquencies from like 3% to like 43% overnight. I wonder if we get to a point, just like we were just talking about with laws, where people are like, I don't, I don't respect that law. People are just like, I don't respect my debt. I'm I not, think there are a lot of people I'm who not, say yep. stuff like that. <laughs> They're gone. like, why, why, this is like, I'm never going to be able to play this off. I'm not going to deal with it. Like there's something I can do. I mean, ultimately, theoretically, the consequences, but this is why the argument of like, Joe Biden campaigned on, I am going to forgive student loans. That was him saying, essentially, I'm going to bail you guys out. And that's what people, why people feel attached to him, I think, and why it's potentially the biggest flaw in his campaign, because there are people who need or are counting on the fact that they will not have to pay these loans because they see it as an impossible financial hurdle. I, but, oh, what are you saying? I was going to say the, the biggest problem for me is that there's no, um, there's nothing stopping it from happening again if they were to bail everybody out, right? Because they're Unless making... they stopped issuing government-backed student loans, which they won't do. They still haven't done it, sorry. Well, even on top of that, they're not doing anything as far as the universities. What's their culpability to it? Like, why Why does the same school that, that taught your parents, how come it costs 10 times mm -hmm. more? No one, no one addresses that, but they can just charge whatever they want and the government just packs it up. How come the government doesn't have stipulations, mm -hmm. right? Why, why can't you default on student loans? Right. Why can't we do? Well, then, yeah. There you you, you there used you to be able to. I think George Bush Jr. made it illegal to bankrupt your student loans. 2003 or something. Right. Because, and I'm willing to bet, and I could be wrong, it's because the, the federal government stepped up even more with student loans. So they said, if we're going to step up even more and invest in the American public, we can't have them all defaulting because that would default the government. Well, here we are. Rather than just be like, maybe this isn't a great system. Maybe we should consider <laughs> not issuing these. Maybe we shouldn't be so obsessed with college being the one path to anywhere in America. I that, get, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, well, I get that banks are for profit, so they want to charge you interest to make money, which is disgusting, but that's the system. But that the government is doing this for profit, that they're going to loan me money and then expect interest back. Like they loaned yeah. me 20 grand. 
I don't want to pay them back more than 20 grand. I've already paid $13,000 in interest. But it's, it's not so much about a profit. It's about how the modern monetary system works. And with the creation of the money supply, what they want you to do is pay back. Uh, Grant, don't get me wrong. Like a lot of these interest rates are greater than greater than the rate of inflation. But a component of it is if uh, uh, the economy is inflating by 3%, we want you to pay back comparable buying power. If we give you 100 apples, we want 100 apples back. Guess what? In a year, apples are going to cost more money. You're going to need more money to pay back. I would, I'd be down with that. If, they, if, they, if you paid back with a, your increase with inflation, if it went up with inflation, that would be understandable. That mm-hmm. would be logistical. But this just flat out interest rates, compound interest on 18 year olds that don't, aren't taught about compound interest, full predatory, man. And I, I, I don't refuse to pay back the interest. I'm not interested in doing it. Here's a, a story from entrepreneur.com. This gets worse before it gets better. Kevin O'Leary warns of real chaos set to hit the U.S. economy this fall. I thought this was interesting. I saw this uh, a couple uh, days ago. He said, you're just starting to see the chips fall. The layering is as follow. The regional banks don't know yet what their capital requirements are going to be. So their loan books are, have closed like a turtle in a shell. This gets worse before it gets better. And what's it doing to small business killing them right now? O'Leary argued that not enough money is being pumped into small businesses and blamed the most recent Fed hikes, including a benchmark raise of 0.25% last month. Yada, 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 yada. The only thing I really care about this article is it's another high profile business person sounding the alarm bells in the economy. Mm -hmm. And after learning about what's about to happen with student loans kicking in and a lot of people not being able to pay them back, it is not unreasonable, in my opinion, that that could be a large catalyst or at least a small component of. I don't know if it's be the big component or the small component of some kind of economic crisis, especially if it hits the, the, the co-signers on the, student lo- on the student loan debt. And then, of course, you have, I've mentioned several times, Michael Burry betting against the U.S. stock market. It seems like the people who have a lot of money are concerned the market's going to take a hit. I have no idea what that means. I got people asking me every day, like, should I buy property right now? I'm like, I had no idea because <laughs> they're like, but the market's going to crash. I'm like, maybe, probably I have no, I have no idea. What upsets Good me luck. the most and it's so infuriating is we get these jobs numbers out every month and the White House or mainstream media, take your pick. They put this positive little spin on it and wrap it up in a little bow mm. rather than just telling the Americans, hey, here's the problem. And here's what you guys can do as citizens of this country to help everybody and work towards resolving this problem because it, it is so complex and there's no easy solution out of this the economy yeah yes yeah, i mean this all ties into the state of the economy right now it's not monetary that's for sure we're not going to fix the economy by by another kind of money it's going to be through materials i talked with Stu peters about this i believe it's live on his uh channel on rumble but i'll be posting a link on that on twitter later uh the interview i do with Stu peters it's it's technology if we can make energy cheaper make fuel cheaper then the economy has become better and it, so if you make if a tenth of the economy is fuel and you make that a tenth cheaper, you've basically made 1% of your economy. You've made your economy a 1% better. You know, so it's like, that's why I'm obsessed with hydrogen fuel right now. Like, I feel like we can make cheap fuel, make cheap heat, electricity, building materials, transportation, the, you know, the basics. You know, you know, what the, the trouble is, is when you see these videos at a Times Square where someone goes up to another person and says, name a country that starts with the letter U and they can't do it. Or they say like, who's the current president of the United States and they can't, they don't know it. And they'll say like, when did America get its independence? And they'll be like 1871. Like they, they have no idea. And you have a lot of these people, they vote. And when you see these videos, there are powerful individuals who then are deeply offended that these people are consuming resources and polluting. And so they turn around and say stuff like, we need to get a control on overpopulation because there's too many of these people weighing us down. You then get phrases like useless eaters. You get weird international policies such as you will own nothing and you will be happy. And ultimately, that means, Ian, you will not get your cold fusion and your spaceships because in the event that there is an energy revolution on par with like this level of fusion energy, which is insane, that would mean a massive and explosive population boom. That's for sure. And there's a lot of powerful people who don't want that to happen. You think with how expensive college is, we'd be seeing some more of this, uh, these technological advancements. We wouldn't be seeing train derailments in East Palestine with how much Americans are paying for college. But we're not. We're not but the other thing the is like college is a is a business, right? Like, yeah. I don't even know that all degrees are equal. I, I think there are programs that are probably great. But generally, people are paying to have the certificate. They are not actually always advancing to the level that we'd like them to see or that would be implied by the fact that you went to college. A lot of people are in debt, basically having graduated 
by the skin of their teeth mm-hmm. and having learned nothing. I mean, there are colleges that close during COVID because the enrollment is so low and because ultimately the big- business of college is failing. The, uh, you know, you know, you know small what rabbit monkey said, yes, you will, Ian. Don't listen to Tim. So <laughs> I, I see that cold fusion. Thanks, small rabbit No, monkey. I think we will, but I think there's powerful individuals who are trying to reduce population. And, and they, have a, they have a reasonable fear because if every human had access to unlimited energy, Timothy McVeigh, what else would he have blown up? Like the uh, a psycho terrorist that had a horrible childhood just beat that hates humanity has access to unlimited power like that's s- severely dangerous. So I understand why. I, but there, there's scales. I don't want to give everyone cold fusion packs just yet. But hydrogen fuel, it's lightweight and could be cheaper than gasoline. I, I, I'm thinking about what is about to hit the economy. And perhaps the only solution is going to be student loan debt forgiveness in some capacity. It was easy to say. When we are talking about 24 and 25 year olds up to maybe like early 30s that we don't want to forgive student loans. These older people have all paid them back. It's like, look, these people hate the why it's not fair. There's a lot of questions about fairness, about making the working class pay the bills of the highest income earners. But I think there is a, a, a harsh reality to whatever your opinion is, you're presented with two parent factions or fa- parent paths to take one. We do not bail out the people who have student loan debt. And then these people who are in their mid to late 30s and 40s don't have families, don't have kids, don't buy property, become angry and purposeless and and violent. Or we do bail them out and the people who are supposed to be the crux of the economy resume working, have the load taken off their backs, and it stabilizes things a little bit. It's a question about the 2008 crisis when, when they bailed out the banks. Do you let the economy just course correct, shock everybody? There is going to be large amounts of death because of this, because of the economic uh, crisis. Or do you bail out, alleviate some of the crisis, extend it for a little longer, but reduce the amount of death? It's serious questions. I think that the, the reasonable approach that the government will likely want to take is going to be a bailout, whether Joe Biden wants to or not. And in fact, you may see this in 2024, Joe Biden coming out and saying, One of the biggest drags on our economy right now is student loan debt, and you all know it. Each and every one of you that is settled the debt that you can't pay back as you're living paycheck to paycheck, we will get it done. We will pass the pass the bill, blah, blah, blah. You got to vote for Democrat down ticket. What's Trump going to say? Well, you look at what they're doing. So if I owe Joe Biden 10 grand in debt, he's like, you can't pay that back. So what I'm going to do is print money and then take it from you. And pay me back sooner. Right. And I'm like, dude, you can't force me to pay you back, Joe Biden. And you, so no, no, let me pay you back at my pace, I think which that, is I, not, I, which is a well, zero because no, I, I, I have no interest in paying it back. But I think the libertarian response is going to be let the system crumble. Hmm. Just let it fall apart. And then we'll just restart I'm from where we all are. all about with putting the, the default on the loaners, whoever loaned the money, you're not getting it back. I'm not all about printing up money to pay back those loaners. But the problem is the loaner is the government. Mm-hmm. So they got to take the default. I mean, what's the point anyway? It's like a trillion bucks. What's the difference? I mean, I would love to have one presidential candidate say, when I'm in office, I'm going to stop issuing student loans, right? Because the system is broken. We can see it. We haven't dealt with the fallout yet. But no one is saying that. Like, why can't we just, just stop a terrible program from existing? I got I to gotta read this super chat from Sonny, Summer, Sumner, uh, what does it say? Sumner Robinson? Mm-hmm. Citibank has a total of, is that uh, 14 trillion? No, 14 billion? 15, basically. About 15 billion. I was like, the trillion doesn't make sense. Oh, no, no. Okay, I see right here. F- uh, 15 billion shorting the NASDAQ and 7 billion shorting the S&P. Bank of America has 23, is that billion? Shorting the Nasdaq and 18 billion shorting the S&P reminds me of the big short when uh, the guys who bet against that the housing market were wondering why their credit default swaps were stable as delinquencies were skyrocketing and the mortgages were becoming worthless. It's because the banks were lying about what was going on so they yeah. could offload their exposure to unsuspecting smaller banks and, and lenders or individuals. So they would go and say, hey, this is worth a lot of money. You should buy it. Then they would. Then as soon as they offloaded all their debt, they went, markets exploding. Have a nice day. And nobody goes to jail for it. And uh, at the end of the big short, remember they, they said, they had a little joke. Hey, you're yeah. like, oh, we totally held people accountable. Just kidding. No, we didn't. So my question to you guys is, regarding the current situation, the current ec- economy and student loans, should anyone be arrested? And if so, who? Should people be held accountable? 
what should happen. I know you guys kind of started talking about it with the defaulters. Uh, or, or I don't know about arrest, but what I will say is if you actually want to solve a problem, you, you first, you identify what's causing the problem. And I don't see that part. I see people are going straight to the problem and trying to band-aid it. But ultimately, they're not stopping you know, the bleeding from the wound. The, the biggest issue that I see is that the federal government is trying to play uh, manufacturing middle class, mm. right? So that's why they're, they're throwing all this money. Anybody can get a student loan. That's when you start seeing for-profit colleges that don't care about anything. Whereas our parents' days, they got accepted into school. That was the only way you got a college education, right? So they had to, some sort of merit base. And then on top of that, they had to find some sort of way to get a, a loan, but it, back then it was reasonable. Now it's becoming an entire economy on its own based off of cheap money from the government but with, because it, it's no regard, they'll just give it to anybody. That's part of the problem. Same thing with the 2008 crash. Ultimately, it stemmed from the federal government trying to manufacture uh, the middle class by saying the American dream is to own a home, so we're gonna make it easier for everybody. And what do they do? <laughs> they messed up the market and they they incentivized chaos and that's what we're seeing with the student loan market and they're not going to punish the people who are actually abusing it right the co the colleges no one's talking about the colleges everything's about what's joe biden going to do no one's ever talked about the colleges no one ever talks about the endowment right no one well, ever, Chamberlain what, does. what is the seize the endowment <laughs> what's the endowment yeah i hear that seize the endowments what is the endowment exactly it's basically how much money they just got sitting in reserves Right. So, given just money that's been left to them or given to them. Yeah. Okay. Tax free stuff. People are donating. People are it. donating, getting a tax credit, and then yeah. that generates money off of it. Does the government give them d endowment money as well? I don't. I don't believe so. Okay. I don't believe so. But even even from the fact that let's say you have a college that has um, you know five hundred million dollars. I don't know. I'm just making up a number, but they're still charging your kid twenty thousand dollars a semester. Right. Does that seem like it makes a whole lot of sense? Why is it so expensive? I'm not saying it should be free. But why is it so expensive? And on top of that, you know, I was talking to Shane Cashman. He was an adjunct professor. They don't pay any, anything for right. these people. Yep. And, and they hire a whole bunch of adjunct professors. So, I mean, they're- It's a scam. It's, it's one, one big scam. And now they're saying, let's bail out everybody, keep the system in place. And guess what? In 10 to 15 years, we'll be back at the same point. Yeah, it seems like the college system is decrepit at this point and that you can educate yourself online and learn faster, more readily, and from home. But are, are the salaries of the presidents of colleges public, generally speaking? I, I don't know so. off the top of my head. If, I'd I think be so curious to school. see how much money the upper management is making at these schools, because I had no idea well, about the adjunct professor thing. Two yeah, million crazy. Yale. Yeah. The uh, president of Yale makes 1.9 million a year. That's and remember, that. there's like the adjunct professors, but then wow. they hire oh crazy God. administrative blow, right? There yes. was a administrator and a sub administrator and someone who helps with the paperwork and whatever else all the way down. So if, if the point of the institution is to have, you know, professors that are researching and studying things that they're good educators, why are they not the priority? Why do we have 85 administrators for every one professor? That's not the actual statistic. I'm making that up. But, uh, but they're never ed they're never incentivized to cut the fat. Yeah, right. They're, they operate very similar to how the government operates. They create a job and that job never goes away, right? So, so if the government said, we will only give money, but only up to a certain amount, and they started doing that wide scale, they'd have no choice but to cut the costs. Otherwise, they have no customer, right? So then what do they do? They start cutting the fat. We can't have five administrators for, for this task. We have to reduce it because we can't afford this if we're gonna keep everybody making about the same amount. So we have to start cutting the fat. No one ever does that when it comes to college debt. They always say, what's the federal government gonna do for us? They're the ones who screwed this all up in the first place. And that's by giving unlimited loans? Yeah, I mean, quite literally- but you can't just about, default on it. <laughs> you can't default on it, but anybody can get it. Were they like trying to catch catch up with the colleges raising costs so they would give more loan? They'd be like, oh, we'll cover it, we'll no, cover it. I've always heard the inverse, that colleges raise costs because basically they were guaranteed <laughs> that you would ha be able to pay tuition. Instead of being like, well, what can the average family or the average individual reasonably pay to attend our school? They were like, well, you just take out a loan, right? right? Like even now, I don't know if your son will end up, if he's not applied to college yet, right? No, no. Okay, so some colleges will send you like the acceptance letter. I remember this happening to me and they'll be like, congratulations, you got a scholarship. That's yep. so exciting. Mm -hmm. Except half of your scholarship is a loan. 
So they're presenting it to you like, wow, we want really want you to come here. But actually what they want is for you to take out a loan to go there, which is what everyone wants you to do anyways. That's also what the federal go- government wants you to do. One time we talked about on the show, like, I don't advocate that you give to your university. But if you were to, why can't you give directly to a student who is trying to pay off their student loans? Why can't you cover a portion of tuition instead of it going into a pool more than the 800 administrators that they have decide who gets it later. Why can't you have a more direct contact with the student? Because again, ultimately a lot of the money goes into the endowment, which never really reaches the people who need it, like the program heads, like the adjunct professors, like the students. Well, back to what Tim said, it's a scam. Uh-huh. It's not really about the students, right? They give them a superficial product to make them feel like they're learning, right? We go and take these useless classes to make us feel like we're, pro- we, we're being educated. Certainly an interesting situation. I didn't go to college, so my play in this is that I would be paying the taxes on it. I don't think it's good for the government to be adding things onto our debt. It's kind of like um, when you come up short at the end of the month, you run things up on a credit card to cover the balance, but then you never actually budget to pay off that balance. You just keep adding it and getting a new credit card. And that is what the United States is doing en masse especially with student loans and a a lot of the people going to school today and for many of these subjects don't get jobs that are related to the field that they're going to and you could take away stems or like engineering that we're always going to need that doctors and lawyers but anything else outside of those you know it could be very difficult for people to find jobs um I, i got my ged and i do pretty good um, I might make a little bit more if I went to college, but I'm also in my position, I might make the same. So it would really only make sense if I wanted to go into something far more skilled to get that return. And it, it really is just hard work and merit depending on the field you're in. So thanks for sticking around. If you're from TimCast, I thought sharing the whole clip was a good idea. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.